Ever wonder what the volatile keyword does in Java? It has a really interesting role that we're going to explore in this video. So let's jump into it. Let's say we got two threads, which are part of the same process, and they are executed concurrently on two CPU cores. In terms of memory, they have their own stack area, as we already know, and if they have to access some shared variable, the CPU needs to access the main memory, which is commonly known as the RAM memory, on which that variable is currently stored. Now, we know that the RAM memory is located uh, on a separate chip on the motherboard of our computer, so essentially it takes some time until the CPU is able to grab that data from the memory. And usually that access time is around 100 nanoseconds. Now you may think that this is not a very long time to access some data, but on the volume on which the CPU is doing those write operations, this is actually um, a long time that can actually be perceived by a user on the UI level, for example. So in order to reduce this time and to improve the performance, chip designers have decided to add an extra memory layer between the CPU and the main memory with a smaller size, but with a much smaller access time. And this memory is called the cache memory. And as we probably know, this memory is actually embedded into the CPU chip itself. And it has multiple layers. You may probably saw L1, L2, L3, and so on. If you had the curiosity to just uh, check a CPU specification, or even if you uh, take a look on, the, on a laptop online to try to buy it, this particular information is um, specified there because it directly impacts the performance of that uh, computer overall. The access time for a CPU to the cache memory is actually 7 nanoseconds, which is more than 10 times the access time to the main memory. So for that reason, the performance is dramatically improved. And of course, the bigger the cache memory is, the more data you can store into it and the more performant your computer will be. Now let's say we have a shared variable which is stored in the main memory. This can be an integer, a string or any kind of shared variable that you may think of. And let's say that both two threads are trying to read that variable. If they're doing this very extensively, like in a hot loop, in a while through or something like that, so that if there are multiple read operations, invoked on a CPU level, the CPU will try to optimize that operation by storing that shared variable into the cache. And in that way, it will reduce the access time. Now, on the other hand, if one thread is trying to write data into that variable, the visibility of that write for a specific amount of time will be done only on the cache level. Right? So if thread two wants to read to modify that variable, the new value will be seen only by thread two because it will be stored on the cache level. Now, of course, this change will be propagated to the main memory at some point, but this doesn't happen immediately. There is a delay between the cache and the memory update. Now, if thread one is continuously trying to read that variable in a hot loop, it will not see the updated value for that variable. That's the main problem around the change visibility across threads. So thread one cannot see the updated value for that shared variable because it, it continuously reads its own value from the CPU cache on which it is being ran. So for that reason, the volatile keyword has been introduced. So when you have a variable that is marked with the volatile keyword and you want to read data from it, the read will be done directly from the main memory. The cache will not impact this read operation at all. And also if you want to write data into that variable, the write will be stored directly into the main memory. In this way, we have a predictable output of our program and we don't risk having this uh, cache level inconsistency. Now, of course, this doesn't come without cost, right? So if we get consistency, we lose on performance because if we declare all our shared variables as volatile, the performance of our application will suffer. So that's the main idea with the volatile keyboard. Now let's take an example in Java to see how this actually works. All right, so we're going to create two threads and we're going to use a runnable for both of them. So we got T1 and T2, we're going to start them and we're going to use a shared variable that we can simply call 
counter. This variable will simply be read by one thread in a hot loop and it will be updated by the other thread again in a hot loop but for a limited number of times. Both threads will first read the initial value of this counter in a local variable So Trigon will say while local counter is less than let's say 10 if local counter is different than the counter the shared variable then I'm going to print it out and this local counter will be updated to the value in the shared variable to be able to exit the loop at some point. Now on thread 2 we're going to do so here we're going to update this shared variable we're going to say counter equals to local counter pre-increment, right? So first we're doing the incrementation and then we're doing the write on the count. Actually, it doesn't really matter uh, the incrementation order. So here we can just say t2 incremented counter to local counter plus one. And we can also sleep let's say for half a second so on thread one we are only reading that variable for a number of times this is technically a hot loop because we don't have any delay into it and on the second thread we're updating this variable continuously right 10 times basically and we also have a delay here so what will happen here is that the thread one will store the value of this shared variable counter into the cache memory of the core on which it's being ran and when it tries to do this check here it will use the value that is currently in the cache and not the value that is updated by this thread here but let's see this in action so if we run the program as you can see only the thread 2 is incrementing the counter thread one is not able to see the change for this variable because it's checking if it's local counter which is zero technically right because that's the initial value it checks if that initial counter is different than uh, the shared variable and it will be different because the other thread is updating it but thread one is not able to see this right let's run this multiple times to make sure that this is the case right so as you can see, this happens pretty much all the time, actually all the time. So to be able to solve this, we just have to add the volatile keyword to the actual counter. As you can see, the ID immediately observed that this condition is valid now, because now the counter will be read from the main memory directly and not from the CPU cache. So now if we run this program, We're going to see that as long as thread 2 incremented the counter, thread 1 got the change and updated the value. And in this way, it is able to continue the execution. That's the whole idea. Now, of course, in real life scenarios, it's pretty hard to figure out when this happens. It actually requires a lot of profiling and analyzing cache memories and heaps and things like that to be able to see when you have this cache coherency problem. But it is important to know the, the role of this keyword because it may really help you out in different kinds of scenarios that you may encounter in your career. So with that, let's jump into the next lecture.